Hello and welcome to my absolute fail of a Repot With Me video. So what has happened is I'm starting this again, not halfway through, but a little bit through it, because I've been recording with my camera display kind of overlaid over my footage, right? And I appreciate not everyone wants to watch that, but I have given some good answers to some questions that I can't necessarily repeat over that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stitch this together a little bit weird, right? And if you can handle watching the end bit, then cool, right? I will put basically the first couple of questions I've answered on the end of this, but you will literally see a camera display. You'll see the frame rate. You'll see the focus on my face. Like it's not ideal guys. So I'm very sorry. I can't believe I've done that. I've been recording some different stuff recently and I've had the camera set completely differently. So sincere apologies. So I'm going to recap what I've talked about and what I'm doing today. I'm not actually going to show you the plants that I was going to repot. I'll just pull them out as we go to save some time. I can't believe I've done this. This is a nightmare. So um, I'm on repotting some stuff, mainly for the studio. I've actually just finished a beautiful philodendron red moon right here. I will, honestly, I will put in the footage at the end of what you guys have missed, but, but yeah, I, I'm annoyed with myself. So let's just pop this down and I will get another plant now. So let's do this. I need to take off my jacket though, I'm way too hot. So if you want to know the topics I have already covered, you can go to this timestamp where I start talking about these things. But I have already talked about my Invisalign update. I have talked about why my Gloriosum upstairs, the big one with its patch of kind of like variegation is not variegation. Oh, I've just finished talking about why my large Monstera probably can't have a pool. So I really appreciate how annoying that is, but I'm going to stick the questions on the end. And if you just want the answers to the question, then I guess watch that. But I totally understand if you don't. I can't really recap the Gloriosum question in much ease. I'd have to just go through the entire thing again. The Monstera question is that it, basically the Monstera just grows differently. And the Invisalign update is I'm on refinements, basically. So if you don't care about that, that's cool. You've had your updates. But it's only really the Gloriosum question that is maybe a little bit more involved. But anyway, I have some questions for you guys today. <laughs> As you probably would have known if it had recorded properly. And I'm kind of going through them. <laughs> but luckily we go through the superficial ones first, so that's great. Right, next question then. And I will pull out my next plant because I think it's going to be... Something on a pole. I might bring out my Whipple. We'll see. So next question is... Oh, someone wanted to know, and this was a long time ago. This was a long time ago. I totally appreciate this. Um, the Adansonia tissue culture that I did for the TC video. God, was it 2020? Yeah, possibly. Um, how that went. Simple answer is, guys, you didn't get an update just because they died. But they didn't die really due to failure as such. They um, they basically got neglected through moving the shop last year because at the end of the day, I, I didn't have time to care about a couple of Adansonii in some tubes. So long story very short, they died because they had hormones in there, obviously, as I've explained before in the TC video. They had hormones in there to help them reproduce themselves and multiply, but they don't necessarily have hormones in to help them grow roots and, and other things to become plantlets. So they weren't getting what they needed and they just, over time, they just died out. I don't even know when we found them and threw them out. It was a while ago, but that's what's happened. There's no big secret or anything. Just, unfortunately, didn't have time with the shop. The shop, as you know, took, took a lot. It took a lot in 2020. Um, whew. That's really all there is on an update. I did have a question on TC and this might be an old question because I've been delaying filming this for quite a long time. Um, I'll go into part of what the delay is in a moment, but um, a lot of people are saying TC, good or bad? And I, I don't, oh, guys, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. A lot of people are out there turning their nose up at TC and I've talked about this in a, what was it? Was it worst? Plants of 2021, something like that, um, at the start of the year. It's on my channel if you'd like to find it and watch it. I basically talk about what I think the crap plants of last year were. Um, and in that, I spoke a little bit about TC. If you don't know what TC is, it's tissue culture. It's what we were talking about with the Adansonii before. Sorry, I'm now completely all over the place since making that mistake. I don't know what I've covered and what I haven't. Very irritating. A lot of people I see on the internet, and I see it daily, guys. I see it daily turning their nose up at a plant because it's come out of tissue culture. And there's this big thing now. It's like, oh, seed grown this or TC this. And it's like, okay, I, I, maybe there's something I'm missing out on, guys. Maybe there's something I don't understand, but I don't really see what the problem is. 
Um, I've talked about this before. The same people that were demanding that plants go through tissue culture so everyone could afford them are now the same people twisting their nose because plants are coming out in tissue culture and they're affordable? Make that make sense? I thought, what I thought was, you know, the rare plant market was, you know, insane or whatever, and it was not sustainable and prices were really high. And, you know, they were, I'm not saying they weren't, I'm trying to articulate myself. And people were struggling to, sorry, that's going to be noisy. People were struggling to afford things. And obviously everyone was saying, well, just TC it, just TC it. Especially in the wake of that tissue culture video. And then people understood what TC was, why it's done, how often it's done. And then the Asian market started kind of, um, publicizing a lot more that they were doing TC and stuff like that. And um, it, that's kind of the way it's gone. And I'm, I'm just, I'm a little bit confused. Oh, shit, I was supposed to put Paul in here, wasn't I? That was very silly of me. Give me one moment, guys. I am an idiot. I'm so off today. I thought people would be very happy once tissue culture was, you know, really making some headway and we could afford rare plants. E.g., great example, it's the most obvious example I can obviously think of right now, is spiritus. And I don't really get why all of a sudden it's like, TC is terrible. It's like, what, what's made TC terrible? Again, I think this has come from a rumor that someone started where, you know, TC of a certain type of plant is weaker than the original plant. And it's like, I need you all to know <laughs> Tissue culture has been going on for years. 99% of the plants in your house are probably tissue cultured. I'm talking there about like stuff in box stores. So more basic philodendron, basic monstera, all of that is not done via propagation because it's not cost effective. And you, the, the amount of plants you can produce in a lab compared to the physical warehouse, um, what would you call it? Real estate that you could take propagating something Trust me, it's just not done. When you see all these big um, nurseries in the Netherlands and stuff like that, it started from tissue culture. Honestly, it started from tissue culture. So I don't know why people are turning their nose up at it now when they've been buying tissue culture plants for years. Again, it could be because of that rumor. It could not be. I don't really know. I mean, I've told you what I think it is. And I think a large portion of it is what I like to call dick swinging, right? That's my metaphorical dick swinging, right? whatever but <laughs> but anyway I, I think people are doing this because they want they want to dick swing they want the things that are rare and elusive and I mean I try and talk about how rare things are on this channel anyway I think I, I, I don't know if I'm the only rare house plant channel I want but I, I seem to be right but it doesn't matter anyway I like to try and be transparent about the values of things if I don't know how valuable something is I will say um I will try and give rough estimates but the only way, because I, I, get, I get a lot of hate for that, right? But I'm, I'm just trying to be truthful. But the thing is, the only way to bring those numbers down that I talk about on any given plan is tissue culture. And I can't help but feel that the only people that have a problem with it are people that just want to be, um, what, what do you even call it? Just be known for this sort of stuff, right? Just to have the things that no one else has, the unicorn plants and everything like that. I do feel like it's for that. And fine, if you want to be like that, fine. But I don't really see why that's caught on as much. Like someone, did someone put a comment on my shop the other day? And this is not me bashing anyone. But someone basically said, oh, I think it was about my the Spiritus that was selling. And it's like, what did they say? Was it TC or the real deal? And I think I wrote back, TC is the real deal. Because it is. <laughs> And the um, person got really annoyed about it and was like, why won't you tell us that? Why won't you be transparent? And I don't, I don't see a reason to. You don't see any other manufacturer of a plant telling you whether something is from TC. It's a thing that's happening now um, on Facebook and stuff like that. And I think it's happened since the TC of, what do you call it? Where's my plant? Since the TC of the Spiritus, because that was like a big thing that happened, wasn't it? That really changed a lot of people on, on a lot of uh, opinions, you could say. Since then, it's been a big thing. And I just don't... Oh, this, this roots on this aren't bad at all. I just don't understand where it's coming from. It makes no sense to me. If you want to have these plants, guys, 
you've got to be all right with TC and you should be all right with TC because you've been buying it for years. Honestly, you've been buying for years. This is not a new thing. I understand that the level of transparency from growers in Asia is now making it feel like it's a new thing and it's like Frankensteining plants and stuff. It's not. It's not. It's been done for years and years and years. So I'm unsure as to why there is such a resistance. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't care. It's, you know, it doesn't really affect me too much, to be honest, because for everyone that doesn't want to buy tissue culture, there is two people that will. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't affect me. So I'm not saying this with any motive or anything. It literally doesn't affect me. But I just struggle to understand the mindset because the only argument anyone's ever come back with is the TC plant is weaker. And that is bullshit. It's bullshit. The simple answer is, and I've said this before, the TC plant is as strong as the mother plant or the selection of mother plants used. And to make good tissue culture, you basically need more than one mother and you start keeping the strongest ones and you breed them down that way. If you're not doing that, maybe there's an issue. I don't know. But spiritus, for example, I can tell you, I know this seems like it's wild and it can't have happened, but there will have been multiple mother plants used for spiritus TC. They absolutely will. I know you're probably thinking, no, there's like hardly any of them there. No, there is. There's actually a shit ton in Brazil that people can't get out of Brazil for one thing, right? They're everywhere. They are everywhere. Um, I didn't know that at the time of like my original Red Plant Index, but there is a lot. There's a lot out there. Um, there's a lot that's being passed around that it shouldn't be, and you've got to be really careful. In some ways, TC can be a little bit more... Um, well, I guess it's a surefire way to guess that your plant hasn't been poached. You know, there's advantages and disadvantages of everything, but in my personal opinion, to not waffle on about it all day because you know how I get. I don't think TC is a bad thing, guys. Personally, I think it's what everyone asked for because I don't know what magic answer people expected to happen other than the tissue culture of plants. Do you know what I mean? How did you expect... Sorry, I'm going to tie this on because it's kind of going everywhere. How did you expect to have a super rare plant um, quickly and not pay quite as much for it without tissue culture? Someone needs to tell me, if you are against TC, why you thought that would be achievable. Because that's really shit processes, by the way. Because it's not. I just don't understand it, guys. And honestly, I'm not branding anyone for hating TC. Do what you want. It doesn't make a difference to me. But you're asking my opinion on it. And my opinion is I don't understand why people are so passionately against it. Because half of these people are passionately against it. Don't even um, know fully the differences or anything like that, if there are some. A lot of people just go off what one person said about one plant, and then they're like, oh, well, this is gospel. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of misinformation out there and stuff like that. Um, again, I can't tell you everything. I'm just one person. I don't know the exact amount of other plants that are being used by all these places. Of course I don't. I'm just telling you, on the whole, TC is not bad. It is down to the mother plants used and that is it. You can have TC plants that are strong as nails. How do I know? Because they're in box stores everywhere and they're TC'd. So that's kind of that. Right, this, oh, I'm, I'm not loving what I have done here, <laughs> to be honest. I'm trying to get this to stay and trying to just secure my whipple so that I can plant it properly. This is way too big for this, to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you, but I've tried to keep it up in the pot so we don't get any any rotting, basically. Hopefully, I don't rot it. That would suck, would it not? But we'll see. So, yeah, I think TC generally, guys, it's going to be around a lot. You, you, if you're thinking you're going to see less of it, you're very much mistaken. It's going to be everywhere. And I think eventually people will just warm to it. I think the proof will be in the pudding with TC and you're not going to see tons of plants that are weaker. How are you even going to know anyway? Can I just ask that, honestly? How are you even going to know? How are you even going to know if they're weaker? A lot of people say that things are weaker, but unless they've owned the actual plants, seed grown, whatever, they can't say it, you know? TC has the opportunity to produce stronger plants than the original plants by the same standard because you can pull out a particularly strong offspring, right? And you can use that as a mother, like, I can tell you straight up, I have versions of plants in here that some literally down to the plant seem stronger than others, right? My oblique, for some reason, seems a lot stronger than other people's oblique. And I know a few people that bought oblique from me say the same thing. It's weird. I see a lot of other oblique, um, maybe not nowadays, but back in the day, it was deemed to be very, very flimsy. And I thought it was, but honestly, I've got people growing mine in living rooms and all sorts. 
um, and it seems fine. I've got plants in here that are the same plant, but one is just tough as nails and the other one just can't seem to catch a break. Do you know what I mean? You could argue that could be down to many things, but again, there will be some plants that are just naturally a little bit more tenacious than others, and it will be down to the individual plant itself. And when you have TC, you do have an opportunity to capitalize on that. Of course you do. Of course you do. And if you think that the growers are going to take the weak ones and reproduce them, of course they're not. It's their money they're spending on this to tissue culture these plants, right? So they're going to pick the strong ones. I assure you they're going to pick the strong ones. They want a good production line. So I don't know. I think people just need to stop and think about it. And, you know, this is to benefit them. It lowers things like poaching because now you don't need as many mother plants to get a good supply going. Someone just needs to take a few off the TC and it's done. So there you go. Helps with that. That's another hot topic in the plant community that I'm all too happy to do, you know, more videos on and stuff. Um, but, but that's that really. Like, I don't think it should be viewed on as bad. And I think the people that are talking about it badly, in my experience, they have had another motive in mind. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't understand why um, stuff like that is deemed bad for the environment. I would argue it's subjective, right? It's how you look at it. I think was there, there was a few people saying at one point that I think plants tissue cultured like that are bad for the environment because of all the pots and stuff like that. And it's like, that's the entire plant industry has plants in pots. I don't personally get it, but anyway, I digress. That's what I want to say on tissue culture. I know it is long, but that's kind of my opinion. I have no problem with that. I think it's where it's the industry is going. I think it's where it has to go. Do I like it as a seller? Hell no, not really, because I'm doing this manually, right? I'm propagating all my plants here manually. Do I like TC for me as a seller? Not really. It's okay. It means I can sell some plants and, and whatever, and I can get some things where I couldn't before. Cool but so can everyone else, right? So honestly, there is no motive to this at all. If anyone's worried about it, there is no motive to this. TC is not the best for me at all, at all. It's not because I now can't compete growing things this way when people are TCing things, you know? But for you guys, and this is why I talk about it this way because I acknowledge it's shit for me, but for you guys, it's good. It's really good. You can get things much cheaper than you ever could have before. Do you know what I mean? It's really good. And right now I'm selling Spiritus at probably one of the most affordable prices it's ever been, right? And that's great, awesome. Just just be happy you can have more plants, honest to God. It's not that deep, guys, it's honestly not. It's really not, right. Oh, I haven't put this in an outer pot, my bad, two minutes. Oh, please. <laughs> it's stuck, oh, no it's not, no it's not. So that is Whipple on pole. Hopefully it does what it needs to do try and show you it because I did actually show you it in the original footage but obviously not including that till the end am I so we are going to do another one on a pole because why not same gig same gig let's pick this up and we might have to get into the main main topic of the video actually which if you don't care about me personally you won't care and that's fine but uh oh wait this is relevant hang on <sighs> my solicitor is texting me wait a minute uh Oh, wow, okay. That's not something I realized, okay. That, that changes what I was gonna tell you, so it's kind of good that that's happened. Right, so I, I may as well get onto this because I don't know how long I can like hold off on it, but a lot of people, a lot of people are asking me about my horse and I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I said this in the original shit footage, but if you don't follow me on Twitter, you, you have no idea what's going on. Um, I think some of my members, sorry, this is noisy. Some of my members um, on Discord may know if you've been on there recently, you might know about the update I'm about to give you. But um, a lot of you probably don't. And I edited a video of, sorry, that's the unit is contracting because there's a lot of sun. I edited a video of the horse, um, you know, my reasons for buying him, um, my journey with riding as a kid, lessons I showed in this video anyway that has never aired. I showed videos of me starting to learn to ride again when I was really bad, how I look now, um, stuff like that. And I showed you the horse, except I didn't show you, so please don't go looking for it, it never aired. I showed the horse um, and I didn't give you his name, but I showed you the horse, you've got to see the horse. Oh God, okay. This is gonna be a long one, so I'm probably not gonna be talking too much about the plants anymore. 
Um, I'll try not to make it last the whole video, but I, if it does in advance, I'm really sorry. It's a huge life event I'm going through right now. And I just need my space to go through that. So this is one of the reasons why I haven't done this repot till now. Half of me was waiting for updates. Half of me was busy. Half of me had to do other things, drop other things, draft things out. So much has happened, um, but I'm going to go through it with you now. So please give me some patience because I might forget things. I might get things in the wrong order. It's been a lot. This has been happening since I believe November. So I'm going to go into all I can tell you about the horse because I'm pretty sure I have not given you an update since I said, at least on these videos, since I said I was purchasing one, right? Um, and then I paid for him and he was going to pass his vet and stuff like that. So I'll take you from there. So anyone that doesn't know, I bought a horse in end of October last year. And I mentioned it on a repot. It will be there somewhere in my latest repots. It might not be the last one I did. There might have been one after that, but it's one of those anyway. Someone can point you to it if you want to know. Um, so I bought a horse. He passed his vetting, by the way. He passed with flying colours. He was... Oh, two seconds, guys. I cannot concentrate while putting these things in. They need a bit of strength. Wait a minute. I'm going to tell you what the plant is before we keep going, just so, again, I don't get interrupted. I did tell you this on the original one. If you want to see it, I will just whack the footage on the end for anyone that cares at all to the answers to my other questions in the intro I gave or, or anything. But this is Philodendron Longolobatum Leano Miano. This is a really cool plant. <laughs> you just got to trust me. I'll try and put a picture here of what they look like. They look great. So I'm going to be pulling this. I don't know if the roots are good enough. This is too big, but we're going to do it anyway. I'm just going to put the roots higher up in the pot to account for it. So yes, you can hate on me if you like. That pot's too big, I know, but I'm not going to do anything about it. If anything, let me test for you whether this is going to fail. And then you don't have to do it to your own plants. So, got that there. Let me just take this out. Ooh, not a lot of root on that, is there? It's all right. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of new roots since I've had it in. I've had it in a while. Can you see this? Yeah, maybe. The little white roots there. There's obviously some moss on it. Right, so, I'm oh, sorry. I will keep talking. So, got the horse in. There was a vetting. I did not attend the vetting. I uh, basically said to the seller, like, oh, should I come to the vetting? She was like, no, no, you don't need to. So, I was like, right, okay, fine. Um, the horse was delivered to me on November 3rd when my livery started. My livery is a great livery. Um, really, really professional. Love my livery. They've been so nice to me throughout this entire thing. Oh, my God. If I could give a medal out to any person this year, one single person, it's probably my livery owner. But anyway, so, um, so I'm just thinking about that text message. It's really stressful. Sorry, he might see a different side of me today. But, right, sorry, this is really hard to articulate. I thought I had all my shit figured out, but I don't. The horse came, the owner came with the horse in the trail and dropped the horse off. And the horse was lovely. He was as he was, he got into his stable, he had some rugs on that didn't fit him, they were a bit too small, and he did a little roll, he was, you know, looking around his stable, whatever else. The owner stayed with us for a little bit, um, went and showed around the livery a little bit, showed us some of the horses, yeah, as you do, and then she left. Now, as soon as she left, there was a change in this horse that I'd never witnessed before. I will get into that the best I can. I can't give you too many details and it'll become very apparent why, but basically, this horse was immediately very aggressive um, over the stable door. You couldn't even stand on the outside of the stable, like a good two meters away from the stable. This horse was having none of it. Really, really aggressive, nippy, bitey, stomping the foot, just not a happy horse. Ears pinned flat back to the back of his head. Um, not great. Now, when the owner was there before she left, she was constantly feeding this horse treats, right? So we didn't notice this behavior when she was here at all. Uh, whenever I rocked up to view the horse, the horse was already out of the stable, um, in the stables, but out of his stable. And he was tethered up and he was having hay while he was having a bit of a groom and being tacked up or whatever, right? That's the conditions I saw the horse under twice. Um, so I'd never seen the horse in the stable like this. And to, to really shorten this down for you, um, she had been feeding it treats to hide the true nature of this horse when she'd known fine well I hadn't seen it. And I believe that on the day of the vetting, she didn't want me to be there because she thought I would see this behavior. And being a novice, I didn't know any better, so I didn't go. But anyway, 
you can see where this is going, guys. I realize a lot of you have already figured this out and it is going that way, but let me get there, right? It's a lot. So, really grumpy in the stable. Now, I, <laughs> I wasn't really nervous around horses, but I am now. And that's a real shame because this horse really tests you, honestly really tests you. Um, the way he is in the stable, I mean, I think it was a few weeks ago now, he actually bit someone on the face who was changing his rug. Nothing else other than changing his rug. Um, and he will, he'll lift up his front legs when you try and uh, muck out his stable and stuff if he's in there. He has to be in there in the minute because it's winter and there's not really any turnout. I might have discussed that before. Um, there kind of is no winter turnout around here. It's just, it is what it is. They get exercise in other ways. Um, so anyway, when he was being mucked out and stuff, he was super aggressive. And I mean, aggressive. So that was one thing. I contacted the owner, I think literally seven days after receipt of the horse, because basically because he was always being treated, I spoke to my livery owner. My livery owner said, he's probably nipping like this and he's, he's being annoyed because he's not getting his own way because of treats. Not necessarily the stable behavior, that's different. But the behavior over the stable door or around the stable like that, my livery owner said, it's possible that this could be a treat issue because the horse is being given too many treats, basically. And he's just gonna try and bully you into doing it. Can you even see me? Yes, you can, I realize this is weird. So the test case for that was us basically um, holding off on the treats to see if he behaved himself. Um, he didn't, he really didn't. And he kept on doing that. So despite me not being able to give my new horse treats at all, which sucked by the way, cause I'm a bit of a like a cuddle monster kind of person. Um, we had to not give him anything, but it, it didn't work at all. Um, I rode him a couple of times. I think I've only ridden him a few times total because after that professionals had to ride him. You see where this is going guys? Um, give me one moment. Sorry, I know that the uh, interruptions must be really irritating. I, I do apologize. Can't do much about it though. Oh God, no, don't fall over, don't fall over, don't fall over. I'm having a bad enough day. Stop it. So anyway, where were we at? Yeah, not treats, basically. Horse just turns out, he's really aggressive in his stable. Now this is a big problem for me as a novice. I can't learn how to care for a horse like that uh, with an aggressive horse, and it's certainly not the horse that I paid for. Um, so on from that, it gets worse actually. So, sorry, I'm out of breath. I should not be out of breath. I think it's a combination of talking, stress, and being really hungry. So, now let me figure out where this is going. It's going there, I'm gonna tie it. So anyway, that's one thing. Ridden, let's talk about how he is under saddle, shall we? So, I, since I had him, I didn't hack him. I actually paid for him to be hacked. So in America, I think that's a trick, I'm not sure but paid for him to go out and about, basically. Um, either on the roads, over the fields, you know, that sort of stuff. Not in the school, basically. I paid for that to be done because, honestly, any horse I bought, I was not gonna take him out until I knew he was absolutely good, right? Because as I say, I am basically a novice. So, um, he was taken out. He was absolutely fine, actually. He was really well behaved, apparently. He was, he was lovely. Dealt with anything that was thrown at him. Um, there's a point in time where I think the rider that was riding him dropped her keys or something. She had to dismount and get back on. And he was he was good as gold. He was fine. No problems. Really well behaved. Didn't bat an eyelid at the front or the back of the group, we'll call it. Um, sorry, I know horse people will care. Non-horsey people might not. Didn't mind being at the front or back. Um, just confirmed to be as described. Not strong. Nothing like that. Outdoors. All was well, right? Didn't hear any problems back. Now in the school was a bit different and to shorten this down i rode him and i actually oh god i've had a few problems with him so the first time i fell off was after seven days of ownership actually because I, I tried to bond with him as much as possible in the in the early onset i was there every day um, i fell off on the seventh day i believe it was now after this I had a professional rider ride him and suss him out and see what, what the issue was basically. And she confirmed that he is absolutely not okay with a whip at all. He's also a little bit spooky, which is odd because he wasn't supposed to be. I know you know where this is going. Um, what else happened? Ben uh, rode him in the school and he, he basically dropped the shoulder and had Ben off for no apparent reason. 
That was fun. He then did it again a couple of days later on the lunge. He was being lunged by a professional. He was going round and he came off twice, I think, then. I'd stopped riding him already because I was already very concerned. I was also concerned because there was another occasion where another member of staff was schooling him as well. Um, and the member of staff went to put her leg on in the school just where the gate was. She was just starting to go. And this horse, according to the staff, put his head between his front legs and proceeded to continuously try and, I don't know how you describe it, flip off the rider um, to the point where he was jumping up and down on all fours and all sorts of things, apparently. I didn't know horses could do that. I've never seen a horse do that, but that's the report I got back. Not good. So I've already stopped riding him at this point, by the way. Can't handle it. I can't, I cannot, I cannot. I also can't afford to be off. Um, off work for that long. I can't, this is my main source of income. I can't do that. So I was from then on out, basically what I'm trying to say is I paid professionals to ride him. I have not ridden him since, gosh, maybe mid November. This is, this is how ridiculous this is. I've not ridden that horse since mid November. I haven't, I haven't. Um, so anyway, I had professional ride him. And when I say professional, just trust me when I say very professional, right? And I had a wonderful, young lady school him and I paid for a few sessions of schooling basically to see if it was a discipline issue if he was just you know taking the piss or he was spooky or let's get to the bottom what it is is it his health what is it um he gets a vet check once a month and his health is great there is no problems with his health and um, he gets all his worming done he gets his shoes done he gets all of that done the saddle fits great it's all of that before anyone tries but anyway the, this horse was being schooled and I think I was going to do a week's worth but we didn't get to a week we got to three days in and my livery owner rang me up and said, stop, we're stopping this now. Um, he was being schooled by the same um, lady that rode him to kind of check him over with the riding crop and everything like that. And she schooled him for the first couple of days and he was okay. I think they did some pole work and they did some just general schooling. And he was ridden in dressage contact, so he had contact at all times. Good contact, good contact, you know what I mean? On the bit, beautiful outline, contact. He was fine. Then, he was never let off that contact, and this is very important. This is basically what I personally think the behavior is. He was never let out of that contact until I think they were jumping uh, the day after, and there was this girl riding him, and then there was another staff that was assisting, changing the jumps and stuff. And she she knew about his background, obviously, throwing people off and doing whatever. She knew about his background and decided she trusted him enough. They thought she thought that they had some trust together anyway after riding this horse for a little bit. And she just gave him a little bit, you know, to get him out of the outline to let him chill out while the jumps were being set up. Just a little cool off, you know, horse riders. I know you know what I'm talking about. Sorry, I know I can't articulate it. She let him just have a little bit of just chill time, and he barely had the chill time. And he did what he's done numerous times with the other rider that happened to be in the um, the arena setting up the jumps. These are the two uh, ladies that have ridden him. And he did what he's done many times. He dropped his shoulder and he bolted across the other side of the arena. And he basically unseated the rider. This is not the first time. He's now got a very good record of doing this. So... Oh Lord, this combined with the aggressive thing, my livery owner obviously witnessed all this or heard about it or whatever, um, rang me later that evening because I knew he was being schooled. I was getting little updates and stuff like that. I knew he was being schooled and he basically said, look, you need to send this horse back right now. This has gone far enough. The grumpiness is one thing and you've been massively, you know, he's been misrepresented so much in that sense. But this is, this makes this horse completely unsuitable for you in every way, shape or form. Do you know what I mean? Every shape or form. You cannot ride this horse. I strongly advise, I think he said, I strongly advise that you do not ride this horse because this horse, when it decides it's had enough, he will drop his shoulder and he will bolt and he will make sure that he can get you off either from flinging his head between his legs or doing whatever else. And I was just like, oh my God. So shorten this down. We contacted the seller. Of course we did. Now she'd already known about the grumpiness, although she never tackled it directly, obviously, because she knew and she probably didn't want to say anything, but she already knew about that. We didn't really get much of an answer out of her for that. But now we had something else to tell her about. 
he basically said, look, this horse is not, being as kind as we can be here, this horse is just not what we were sold. It's not what we were sold in the slightest. And we, we really need to send it back. He's, you know, we've been advised we can't even ride him. We explained everything that I've just explained to you. Um, he's, he's not, he's not for me. Like, I, I can't, you know what I mean? Um, obviously, seller, no. Just to show it down. Um, no, they said no. They gave me a load of reasons why. They said, you know, we can't, um, we can't take them back. We can't justify the price of having them in full livery, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they also, for some reason, they let it slip that, you know, he is what he is. Um, we bought him from a dealer and before he came to us, he'd spent three years in a field, which that was a revelation because trust me, if anyone had around me had known at the time that that was the case, no one would have bought that horse. That's a big piece of information that's pretty pertinent. Um, told my livery owner about all this and they were, their like mouths were open. Um, cause basically you don't know what you're getting if a horse has been in a field for three years. And anyone wondering about his behavior, if you're going to suggest, you probably wrote the comment already that he's young or he's whatever. He's 12. And a few people ask me on Twitter, you know, oh, I, you know, behavioral problems. How old is he though? And every time I say 12, they all go, ah, okay. And I'm like, yeah, this horse has not learned this overnight. This is not an unsettled thing. This is a learned behavior. It's not, what do my livery owners say? It's not super unique either. Horses are known to do this sometimes. Um, I did speak to a previous owner. And they have confirmed that the horse does do that. So it's not me, by the way. It's not a medical thing. And it's not me. Um, not me. Do you know what I mean? Not my uh, living in the conditions that I put him in kind of thing. I put him in a top livery, by the way. Very professional. Amazing. Um, so that's that. But seller was like, no. Seller said no again. She's come up with very re various reasons why it's a no. And one of them is that... She wouldn't put her son on him if he wasn't um, safe, basically. Sorry, I'm struggling with my words because there's so much this I can't even tell you. And her son happens to be a show jumper that can jump one meter ten. So really, her son is not a novice and she shouldn't have sold the horse to a novice is basically what I'm alluding to. So obviously, over Christmas time, I mean, Christmas Eve, I, I actually spent it doing my expenses for the horse since I bought him um, to prepare for legal action and I'm since taking the legal action that was a text message from my solicitor who's just told me that they've received a response yesterday um, to the letter I sent so I sent an initial, initial letter to them saying look we've tried to solve this without going down this route here is the situation here's all the things you've done wrong um, fix it all I want is for you to take the horse back and give me the money back I don't even want my expenses but just so you know here are my expenses and if you make us go to court I will claim my expenses because this is a lot of money for this horse each month. It's, it's full livery. So you can imagine, um, we gave them two weeks and if they didn't do anything, then we'd take them to court. They came back on the 14th day, basically saying, we're going to now take two more weeks to build a case. Um, but we refute everything you've said, basically. Um, that two weeks ended Monday, the, what are we on now? The 23rd. So it ended on Monday, the 21st. And seemingly there was no response up until literally I got that text message whilst filming. I didn't think there was a response. Um, apparently there was a response yesterday. So as I'm filming this video, I don't know what that response is, but it's going to be something very generic and that she refutes any of the problems wrong with it. Now, I know a lot of you may have a lot of questions because I've skimmed a, a, a lot of that. I can't even speak. Um, believe me when I say I have skimmed it. I know that seems quite involved. I've skimmed that a lot. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. So I've just decided, you know what? 2021 is the last time someone fucks with me. Quite honestly, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of being taken for a ride or have people just come at me for any reason. I'm so sick of it, guys. And I finally snapped. And it's kind of ridiculous that I'm paying best part of 600 pounds a month for a horse I can't ride. I can't really groom him very well. I can't go in the stable. I can't be near him when he's having food. I can't be near that horse. Wow, what a turn of events, eh? 
So I'm, I'm learning uh, to ride still one lesson a week. I managed to get a lesson back at my, my place that I was learning to ride before. So if you think about it, what was costing me around about 22 pounds a lesson uh, now costs me an insane amount a month to learn to ride a horse, given that I actually right now own a horse, have owned a horse all this time, but alas, I can't ride him. So the plan, by the way, they're obviously going to refute whatever I've fucking said. I'm sure it's juicy. Um, I'm going to turn around and go, fuck you. And we will either send another letter to try and, you know, persuade them to settle or I'm going to take them to court. And I tell you now, my case is so ridiculously strong with all the evidence. I'm going to win it. Um, there's not much of a doubt in my mind. It's a very, very small doubt. My solicitor has assured me it's a very straightforward case because I have all the confirmation from her in writing that he doesn't have any quirks. He has no vices. He doesn't tank off. Odd quirk to mention, considering he does do it. Um, you know, he, he is for a novice and he's, he's great and he's perfect. I have all that in writing. Um, also, this is a big thing. Um, and you'll hear about this in a, in a couple of months, actually. But there is this thing when, when I confronted her and a lot of sellers do this in, in probably a lot of, um, communities, actually. It should probably be brought to light for the plant community. But a lot of sellers, when questioned on something, they will say, Oh, I'm a private seller. I'm not a trader. So you don't have essentially what's called the Consumer Rights Act, which is the right, in my case, to return that horse for a full refund plus expenses. That is my legal right. If my seller is deemed to be a trader, right? My seller says that, um, she is a private seller. However, I have proof that she has sold more than one horse in the last 12 months. You need to have sold two or more horses in the last 12 months to be considered a dealer. So that's not going to go very well for her. And I honestly don't understand why anyone is fighting this. But that is the situation anyway. So trust me, I will take these guys to court and I'm going to win. But the problem is, I think, did my solicitor say it was three to five months for a court date? So we haven't initiated the court date yet because they've been fanning on with letters. So ironically, I honestly believe it will come to as late as November, possibly, to get this sorted, which means I've owned a horse for a whole year that I can't ride or do anything with. Now, I will say something that I should have said at the beginning of this um, for anyone concerned about his welfare. He is under the best care. He is given the best food. He is looked after. He is groomed. He is exercised. He is exercised not through ridden exercise anymore. It's unfair to ask the staff to do that, but he is lunged and at some points he will probably um, have a swim or something like that as well. So he's being exercised. Please do not, you don't need to be concerned about that. Trust me, there's no way I would let this horse suffer for something that is not his fault because at the end of the day, someone's done something to this horse and I'm very well aware of it. A lot of the aggression in the stable, you can tell something's, somebody's done something, you know what I mean? I don't know when. I'm not saying it was the last owner. I don't know who the hell it was. How can I say? But something's happened to this horse. So I don't blame the horse. I honestly don't. I don't want anyone to think, oh, the way she's talking about him is not his fault. It's not his fault at all. This is her fault. And if she bought him from a dealer, she should have gone back to her dealer and dealt with this properly instead of passing the book onto someone that she knew could not handle this horse. And I am so pissed about it. But yeah, um, I thought I would have heard nothing. Um, as of this morning, I, I had heard nothing and it was past the deadline, but it turns out something's come through yesterday. My solicitor is um, not in the country at the moment and she has not laid eyes on it yet. So I can't actually update you. Um, I was hoping to have by the time this video has taken place, but again, hasn't happened, has it? I'm just see how long I've been filming. I've got one plant to go. We're at 48 minutes. I might leave it there, guys. I know I've got another plant to do, but I think I might leave it. It's a lot. Let me just see if I've got any other questions. That's basically it though. Um, it's really shit. And at the minute, I don't need to tell you this, it's quite personal, but I'm working as hard as I can to save up as much money as I can to basically go to court over this horse. Um, it was a large purchase price for the horse. So it's not a small claims court thing. It's, it's a bit more than that. I think I might have that wrong, but I think it is. Um, so it's a lot and the expenses keep mounting every month. Not only that, but I'm, I'm trying to save up to have a house as well. Um, so I'm, I'm just working my ass off really and keeping my head down. That's probably why you haven't heard a ton from me. Um, generally, I've just been working really hard. Is there anything else on here? No, not really. You've, it'd be weird to follow it up with something small and meaningless, to be honest. But that's kind of where it's at. And um, 
I'm sorry if that's not what you wanted to hear today in the updates. I will have given you a timestamp to skip to miss all of this if you don't care. Um, it's, it's weighing me down a lot. I, my God, the tears, the tears that were coming out of me in December over this was just horrific. It was just horrific. Um, I've kind of moved on from it a little bit, even though honestly, this is just the start of this. Um, I'm doing as best as I can. The horse is fine. The horse gets updates. The horse gets checked every single month by the vet, no matter what. It's kind of like a thing that they do around here. A lot of liveries have it. They have deals with the local vet where the local vet will just come and check everyone because it helps them, right? If there's something wrong, then they can make the money out of fixing them. Sounds horrible, but that's what it is. It's a business. So, and um, he's checked all the time. He's just been wormed recently, I think, as well. I still pay all my insurance on him. He's very well looked after, I promise you. Honestly, from me to you, I would never do that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I don't want anyone to come away from this thinking, oh my God, she's shoved him in a box and left him. That's literally not happening. Um, he's got many staff looking after him, actually. And my livery owner, both of them, are on speed dial, essentially. They are up to date with my case. They are prepared to make statements for me and all the rest, because honestly, a lot of this hasn't even happened around me. A lot of this has happened when I haven't even been there. I haven't even seen a lot of this. I can't even, if I'm asked to testify in court, I can only be asked on certain occasions about certain things because I haven't even been there. And no one can accuse me of degrading this horse because I've had professionals look after this horse from the get-go and horses don't just do this overnight, you feel me? I'm just so, so upset by by these people. They, they didn't have to do that. They Like that horse would have sold to someone else. And honestly, I'll say it now, an experienced um horse person could could handle a lot of this I think but as for a novice absolutely not absolutely not and I'm being transparent with you about this and I'm being transparent on the internet where I don't know if these people know who I am or what I do I have no idea I don't know if they'll ever see this but there's nothing I'm saying now that I won't be saying in court or I haven't said in writing um, so I'm not breaching anything by saying any of this it's just the God's honest truth guys it's why I haven't seen an update it wasn't right to put out that video about the horse because when I was talking about him, obviously I knew half of this. This was before I think he then threw off the last rider when he dropped his shoulder and he was very aggressive about it. It was before that. So I think I'd edited it and it was going to come out later that week. And then I got the phone call like the day after. So it hasn't gone out, but that's kind of like the major thing with me at the minute. And it's going to get a bit ugly, but I have every faith that I will come out of it well on the other side. I think the horse will get sent back and and whatever and I will look for a new horse in time I guess what what a what a wild ride can't even tell you but to move on from that to close the video um I am working very hard and I'm working hard to bring you some some new content shall we say I'd like to think this is the year that new content is coming out so obviously there's some more rare planet next is coming out I think there's two coming up in the next few videos. I've got two for you. One is Skindapsis. The other one, I believe, might be Colocasia. Hasn't been made yet. The Skindapsis one is ready to be filmed. Um, but there should be a lot of cool things coming out, and you will get some good content this year because I'm going to do everything I can to focus on myself, to focus on what I love doing. Because so many people call me an influencer, and it pisses me off, right? Because I don't believe that I am one. I like to think I'm a creator and not an influencer. And this is the year that I'm not going to take shit from anybody, but I'm going to create. And that's what I really want to do. And I'm going to channel all my energy into that. Now, updates on what, everything I've just said to you. I will do my best to update you. I will make sure that I can say whatever I'm going to say. But I, I can't imagine I, there's something I can't say because... One, it's the truth, and two, I would never release personal information of the other party, right? Um, but I will let you know what happens. So at some point in the next two days, I will have, probably by the time this video goes out, I'll know something um, of what they say. And no doubt the next stage is to write another letter, um, probably a firmer one, um, basically saying, sort it out, or we're literally just going to take you to court. Why are we wasting time? So that's that, I guess. Yay! Really enjoying horse ownership. Definitely not anything I thought it would be. So yeah, it's 
It is what it is, isn't it? Anyway, I don't want to dwell on it because again, I've been working really, really, really hard on some stuff and I'm excited to show you it. And you, you don't have to wait too long for it. And before anyone gets like really down the rabbit hole, I'm not secretly doing another documentary or something. Cause I thought about this the other day and someone, I think someone actually wrote something in, in my comment box. And I was like, oh my God, no, 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 no. The new content is not a documentary. That's not happening. I don't want anyone to get super excited because I can only disappoint them um, because I'm not making one of those. But I can't breathe. I need to spend more time breathing. Um, but I'm working really hard and I am excited. Honestly, I am. <laughs> I'm coming to you trying not to be negative. Um, I'm really excited for the things that are coming. Um, and I hope things look up this year. But this is the year that I have lots of exciting things planned and I hope to have fun with it. Despite the other things, I will get up, I will try again and I will move on. So thank you very much for this video today. I'm really sorry. I know people don't like me apologizing, but I am really fucking sorry about the whole camera thing. I don't really expect anyone to watch it um, after this point because one, it's gone on a long time. Two, you've got to see all the camera deets. So if you want to know my camera deets, I guess maybe watch it. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry about that. Brain fart, I'm all over the place. I've been working nonstop. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. To recap, you can't see them, but I've potted three plants. Um, you will only see two of them unless you, you know, look at the end of the video. And there's one that I didn't get done. Um, but I think we'll leave it there for today. I knew that update was going to take a long time. Um, I'm sorry, I guess. Again, I know I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing. I just don't like to load people with things that is just not plants. I get a lot of shit for doing that. But at the same time, I, I need, I need to tell somebody. I have no one here. I've obviously I've got a couple of friends that I can talk to about it and, and whatnot, but I, I don't have many people here. So the fact that I can share it with you guys is great. And please just be nice. Just just be nice. I can't be bothered this week with any crap. So anyway, thank you very much for this video. I really appreciate you watching it. It is supporting me at this time in my life where I need to save as much money as humanly possible for this cold case. It's gonna suck. So thank you very, very much very much for watching my content. And if you ever want to support me, you can either become a member on my channel. The full links are in my channel description, which gets you anything from early access videos to access to the discord and a whole bunch of other things, merchandise, all sorts. You can do that. You don't have to do that. I'm not one of these people telling you to do that. You may do that if you wish. If you don't want to do that, simply just watch my content. And that is a great support from me. And I guess being in 2022 and having taken the time to talk to you, thank you so much for your support, your ever continued support. You're all amazing. So thank you very, very, very much. I love you all. And I will see you in a report real soon. If you want more updates on this, or you want me to tackle like a report where I just do loads of superficial questions, that's fine. Leave a comment. I will read it and we will do that. I've got so many things to report. I can't even tell you. So it's no problem. Um, but yeah, thank you for giving me this time. Sorry about the absolute shit show on the end of this video, and I will see you in the next week, guys. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen, and welcome to a repot with me. This is really weird because one, I've been trying to do this video for quite honestly two months, and two, I think I haven't done one of these since last year, which is really weird for me because as you guys know, or you may not know, I like to do one of these every month or so, somewhere around about there. Just because I feel it's the only time where we can chat about literally anything, you know, anything you guys ask me, whether it's planty or not. So today we're going to go through your questions as per usual. If you don't know how this works, usually I put out a little request box on my Instagram stories, normally a day or two before I film and I ask you guys what you'd like me to talk about. And that can be planty or non-planty. So if you ever want to get involved with these and ask me stuff, feel free to do that. You will have to follow my Instagram to do that because that's where I collect the data. But if you'd like to do that, here are my socials. I'm active on Twitter as well. I'm quite salty on Twitter, actually. And a lot of you, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you will know nothing about today's updates, to be honest, because there's some... There's some stuff being going, going on, I've got to say. But before we get into anything, one, sounds like it's going to rain and it's going to be very noisy. Nothing I can do about it. Two, we have some stuff to pot and it's not really shop work today. This is actually for my studio. So I will try and show you what I've got to repot. I have four things to repot. 
but three of them are on poles and one of them I just thought I'd pop because I kind of like it and I want to have it up in the studio. You will love it. It's one of your favorites. So first thing I want to repot, not in any order, would be the following. This here, I'll try and show you it best I can. That's lecker going everywhere. This here, can you tell? Yeah, I can't hold it up to the camera, guys. You're about two meters away from me. But this is Philodendron Longelobatum Leano Miano. This is a really, really cool Philodendron. Obviously, it's still young at the moment. It's been on my wish list at some point, maybe, has it? Or maybe it should have been on. I can't remember. But it's a really cool plant, and it gets not spiritacy. But if you like Philodendron Spiritus Sancti, it can give you some really cool vibes of that. I featured it in my Spiritus Sancti dupes video that I did, was it last year or the year before? I think it was the year before last year. So if you want to see that, I'll link that down in the description. But that's one of the things I'm doing today. I don't suspect the roots are insane, but I'm going to put it on a pole anyway. It's probably going to be in a pot too big for itself, so... We'll see how that goes. I hope I don't kill it, but I'm, I'm acknowledging when I repot this one, it's going into a pot way too big. Second of all, I have the beautiful Philodendron Whipple Way that is looking very nice. I'll try and get this up to the camera as much as I can right here. I'm trying not to drip that on my phone because I literally have my phone there. You see that? How amazing is that? That's quite nice. Um, I've had this since before Christmas. I've not got around to potting it up. Basically, it's still been in Lekka and it's got to the point where it is climbing now and it is time to put it on a pole. So I'll be doing that. Again, <sighs> the pot's a little bit too big. I'm not gonna lie. I bought the wrong size pots. I thought I had more of the smaller pots, but I don't. I only have one small, so that's kind of shit. So the next thing I'm gonna repot is this wonderful Philodendron Red Moon. Now, I know everybody pretty much told me to go for the different Red Moon. I think I put that one up for sale. I can't remember if it's sold or not in my shop. I do have some of these up for sale, by the way, if you're looking for one. Um, I did go with this one, just because I kind of like the smaller one, and honestly, I thought someone else might be better suited to having a bigger one, whereas I have a lot of plants, guys. You know what I mean? I can have a smaller one. It's not a problem. So I, I did kind of like the red as well. I'm not saying that's the reason. It's it's more for the red, really. But as an added benefit, it's a smaller plant. And pro tip, if you're hoarding house plants, get them smaller sometimes. So I've got a few on the website. I think I've got the one that isn't this one that was featured in that plant haul. I think that's up on the website. Again, don't know if it's sold or not. Can't remember. Um, but we're going to put that anyway. And that's probably the only small pot I have. The last thing that I'm gonna report is this wonderful little dude that is bursting out from his pot. This is the wonderful, mysterious dark boy. Here he is. He's getting a little bit lighter now, but these leaves are so old. If you remember, these are like the original leaves and it has taken so long for them to go green. I suspect some of it is a winter thing as well. Here's the new leaf here. It's just come in. So they do come in super dark and I think it probably will go back dark. But yeah, it hasn't had much growth over Christmas, but I need to show you the roots, guys. You need to understand this. Can you see this? <laughs> it's trying to focus on my face, so apologies, but it, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. We need to sort that out. So I don't know what I'm going to do first. I could do this one first. It's going to be a bit cumbersome, really. I'm just dripping all over my boots. That's not good. I'll tell you what, let's do an easy one first, I feel like. Let's do this little red moon because there's no pull. And I feel like that might be good just to get into the swing. Uh, I think we're having intermittent rain and it's not ideal. So, right. What do I need to do? Before I put my gloves on, I'm actually just going to take the inserts out of this pot because mm, I need to build it first. Right. We will start with a question. I should have had something to wipe this. Do I have something? Give me one moment. I've got water all over the table. And although I fully acknowledge more water will be on the table, I don't really want it there now. Also, by the way, this is something that literally no one cares about. Um, my stainless steel table is starting to rust. And that pisses me off. I thought stainless steel couldn't rust, but apparently if it's shit stainless steel, then it will rust. So I'm a little bit annoyed by that, to be honest. Right, I'm also really annoyed that it's decided to rain right now because it's had all morning and it's been fine, but as soon as I decide to film, there you go. Right, this is absolutely not what you use to cut things with, but we're doing it. Okay, I have a bunch of uh, questions or topics. Some of them are bigger than others, blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. I like to pick and choose. I like to just see where the video goes today. So question one, really quickly, because there isn't too much of an update, is how is Invisalign going? Little quick tour of my face. Looks like that at the minute. Uh, my bottom teeth are looking real good, by the way. This one is 
kind of falling into line. Now, I don't know where I left things with you guys at Invisalign. I know I haven't done a video about it on my second channel in a while, but essentially I needed refinements. So that was real nice. Um, my refinements were about 29 trays. So it was like another six months on Invisalign. I think I'm about halfway through now. I think I might be on tray 15 or 16 now. So basically, <laughs> I have some time left, but you know what? I'm so used to it at this point. I, I don't think I care anymore. I don't think I care anymore. I'm in the acceptance phase of it all. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm on Invisalign. I can't imagine what life was like before it. it it's weird to me now. It's like I just live with these things in my mouth and it, I can't imagine a reality where I don't have them. So I'm not too mad at it really. Quite honestly, and we'll get onto this in a little bit, but I could do with saving the money and not paying for cosmetics on my teeth yet either. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not too mad about it. I'm a little bit annoyed, but I'm not too mad about it, to be honest. The one thing I really want to do with my teeth is whiten them because I'm not happy with the color of them, but I can't because I have two, are they incisors? Two incisor teeth. Are they incisors? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. The two teeth on the uh, on either side of your front teeth, they are, they have a little bit of composite on that's old and it's darker. So if I try and whiten the rest of my teeth, they will whiten, but the composite won't. So I can't really whiten them because then I get dark teeth. So I have to kind of keep them this color and it really pisses me off, honestly. But I'm having to kind of do that while the Invisalign is, is on and they're moving and all that sort of stuff. So at some point I will fix them all up. But uh, as I say, I need to save some money, to be honest. That's basically how my life is at the moment. I've got a lot going on this year, guys. We will get into it in a bit. Don't worry, I'm not going to uh, not fill you in because everyone's been asking me. Uh, but yeah, what, what's, why, why is this an issue for me? Oh, okay. So I'm just building this pot. It doesn't take long to do, to be honest, but this can get a bit fiddly, this bit here. Let me just try and push it in. Oh my God. Sorry. Shit, how much strength do you need for that? Fuck. That's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay, something's gone wrong here, surely. Why can't you just... No. Come on. Come on, honestly, come on. This is silly now. This is silly. You're making me look silly. There we go. <sighs> right, self-watering insert is done. We're going to go with pond for everything today. I have some, well, I have some. Blue choose a pond down below. We're going with that. I just find it works really well for upstairs because it's too, um, it's not dry upstairs, but I think due to it being hotter upstairs, things don't live in Lekka very well. It kind of evaporates, whereas down here it doesn't. So I'm kind of going to use that anyway. Right, I think now it's actually time to get my gloves on and carry on. I need a little bowl for the Lekka out of that. So organized. I thought I was organized. Clearly I'm not. Right then, let's have a chat, shall we? What should we get through first? I am out of breath. Okay, so first thing, I just want to tackle really quickly. Um, I can't remember when this was, guys, really sorry. But um, I had something on my Instagram story, maybe as of filming this a week to two weeks ago. I don't think it was very long ago. And I, I gave out a bunch of updates, uh, you know, talking my usual stuff on Instagram. And I put a picture of my huge Gloriosum that is upstairs in the studio. And I basically, I showed like a patch um, of variegation. And I'll put something here. I showed a patch of variegation on this Gloriosum and I made a very kind of quick sweeping statement. I'll give you that. Um, basically saying like, this isn't variegation, by the way. And I think shortly after, I think it was the next day, I put a question box out for, you know, tell me what you want me to talk about in the repot video. And obviously I haven't filmed it till now. So a lot of people were asking me, you know, why, why isn't it variegation? And honestly, <sighs> This isn't a shit on anyone at all. Honestly, it's not. But I see so many people um, showing pictures of stuff like that on the internet, saying it's sport variegation and stuff like that. And it, it's it's just not, guys. I'm really sorry. I know we all want it to be. I understand why it looks like it. It doesn't seem to be a reason for it. Variegated plants are a lot of money. But I need to put some level of transparency out there, okay? Because if I had a plant like that, and put it on Instagram every time I did have a plant performing that way, right? And said it was a variegated sport. Honestly, guys, I'd have something for every plant in this shop. Doesn't, doesn't matter what species I've got in this shop. I probably have something for every plant in this shop. That's the fucking living wall. You know, 
I've missed filming in here because every single video, at some point it comes on. Quick segue, you will get a living wall update. It's just, it's not happening yet anyway. It needs a little patch up actually. I don't know what's died. There's not a lot that's dead. Most of it's looking quite good. The only thing that's looking really not good is the Queen Anthurium. It hates us. It hates us here, honestly. Um, but everything else is looking quite nice. It went through a period at winter. I'm not going to lie to you. I might have mentioned it. It was not looking good. It was not looking good. But it looks a lot better because I've had uh, some grow lights pointing at it basically all winter to help it through. It just got too dark in here. The wall. I uh, don't know why I thought I'd do an impression of it. Anyway, where was I? What was I talking about? Yes, Gloriosum. If I had a penny for every time I could have done that and put that on the internet saying it was variegation, I'd be a very rich lady, right? Um, I did actually pick this up this morning. Give me one moment. And this isn't me going looking for something, right? This is just something I happened to find this morning that I thought was cool that I was going to show you anyway, but it kind of drives home the same point, right? This here is a really weird looking Anthurium forgetii. I will show you. I'm going to come around with it because I've just wiped the table clear of water. But can you hopefully see? Can you see there? Right. Sorry, I'm standing in front of the camera and I, I don't know what it's focusing on. Let me just see if I can get it to focus on this. Yeah. Can you see this forgetti eye and how weird it looks? I'm going to show you it even closer than that. Can you see how strange that is? One, it seems to have a semi um, set of lobes at the top. It's not. I've, just, I've got a few forgetti eyes doing it. It's weird. So this is what I would call dark form forgetty eye, as you can probably tell. It's not your typical forgetty eye. But look at all that weirdness in the middle, right? The other two, by the way, are looking absolutely fine, the other two leaves. So not maybe the most stunning example of the same thing, but it's essentially the same thing, right? Now, I could very easily <laughs> go on Instagram and say that that was like variegated or whatever else, and it, it's not. And this, I think this plant proves it more because really what I think it is, in my opinion, no, I'm not an expert before anyone comes for me in the comments. To my knowledge, it is not variegation. It is simply a malformation of the leaf. Now, don't get me wrong. Not every plant does this and I totally get it. That's weird and I hope it keeps happening because it's weird and I like it, but we'll see. Is that the newest leaf? Mm, I actually don't know. We'll find out. I'll keep you updated on that. We'll call him something. But yeah, it happens a lot. I've got so many plants in here that do it. I don't think I've got any to hand, unfortunately, because these are all Anthurium and it doesn't happen really with Anthurium as much. It happens on Alocasia. I know you all have seen that. Um, it happens on a lot of different Philodendron and stuff. I think I've got it on a Glorious somewhere. I've definitely got it on the Gloriosum upstairs. I've had it on smaller Gloriosum. I've got a really weird Gloriosum. Wait till you see this one, guys. This one, I keep it on its own because I don't know um, what it is, right? Sorry, I know we're really not repotting at the minute, but it's all about, you know, sharing and learning. So look at that. Can you see that? Sorry, I'm looking at the monitor. Look at that. Is it going to focus? Please focus. I really don't have time for this today. There. That looks a bit maybe variegated, maybe viral, right? I'm not calling that a sport because it's like, no, we need, we need more than that. For sport, I feel like you need a bit more persistence than that. So someone can call me out on it if they want. I'm stood here telling you I'm not an expert. I just have a ball load of experience, right? I don't have any botanical qualifications or anything like that, which I know you guys know, but you know what I mean? For a new person watching, I'm pretty sure it's not variegation. And I don't mind being called out on it if it is, right? Um, I'm not trying to speak like I'm the authority on it, but in my experience, it is not. It is malformation of the leaf. I believe it can be due to conditions or it can be a fertilizer issue is what I think. Now, I'm pretty sure when people get these little blocks on leaves, it is just there and it goes. And it's normally, it's not even normally where the, the, the midrib is, where the main vein is. It's normally like at a random patch on the leaf and stuff. And it's cool, but I don't think it means anything. So if you know anything any different, do not be afraid to say something. I'm not going to bite your head off or anything like that. In my uh, experience and to my knowledge, it is not variegation at all. So I'm happy to have a conversation about it in the comments. Um, I can't really give you any input so far un until I look it up. Again, I'm, I'm answering this this morning be without looking it up, if you know what I mean. Um, sorry, let me just get rid of these. So that's what I have to say on that Anyway, I'm pretty sure it is simply malformation of the leaf. Um, and it can happen to anyone. It does happen in Anthurium. I've had a couple of them do it not like that one, um, a bit more realistic. And it certainly happens in things like 
philodendron, of course, hence the Gloriosum upstairs. That's not the first time that Gloriosum's done it, actually. It's done it a couple of times, but it's... I know what a variegated Gloriosum looks like. You know, it's it's not. It's just not. So all opinions welcome on that. Let me know what you think. Um, I just, I feel like I see a lot of people saying, oh, look, it's variegated. And then my concern, guys, the only reason I'm saying something is because, and I've seen, I've seen a few things in the last few hours. Um, I don't like the idea of people selling stuff as variegation when it's not. And I absolutely will cover this in the future. Don't worry about it. So if you'd like to send anything to me on that, feel free. Um, but yeah, I just, I just want people to be really careful. That's all I want. Honestly, that's all I want. Plants are so much money right now. Just want people to be careful. It's not meant to be um, any shade thrown. I'm not trying to be the authority on anything. I'm just trying to look out for you guys. So in my opinion, that shit is not variegated. Feel free to discuss across the internet. I might be wrong. And if I am wrong, I will literally come back on here, the next report, and tell you I'm wrong and tell you why I'm wrong. So if people know something, cool, awesome. Right, next question while we actually report this. So I've got, I've got a lot of moss on this and it has been sat and lecker with moss on it. I'm going to try and maybe pull a bit off. Uh, we've got a lot to get through today, guys. I, I'm warning you now, although you've probably seen the length of the video, um, I imagine this video is going to be quite long, actually. We could easily go for an hour because I'm waffling already without actually doing any repotting, which is not good, but... I guess my main, my main topic? Is it my main topic? One of my main updates today might take a little while anyway. So I feel like I just need to give a, a really big update and it is one you guys have been asking for and I will put a timestamp to skip it because obviously it's horse related. So I know a lot of people get very angry when I talk about my horse, but I think you need to remember, I, yes, I'm a plant channel, but these reports are to talk about anything. It's, it's left open for a reason and I'll talk about what I want. <laughs> I'll talk about what people ask me about anyway. So, I've just got water all over my phone. Oh, please, come on. All right, I'll get this question and then I'll start potting. Uh, yes, this is another one that people asked based on a Instagram post of mine, namely this one. Um, I put a picture of my beautiful large form Monstera Deliciosa Aurea. That's an important part, large form. Um, and I basically mentioned it's getting a bit... Um, top heavy. It, it looks like it's struggling a little bit. I'm going to give it a pull, a moss pull, um, but I don't think it's going to like me for it. I can't remember exactly what I said, but I basically said it's it's probably not going to work, but I'm going to try and pull it. One minute. We just fill this up because it's going to be noisy. I mentioned something along those lines on my Instagram and a few people are in the comments go, why, why can't you pull it? And again, in my experience, and I think a lot of people agree with me on this one, large form Monstera, so not the small form, not the stuff that's always sold on a pole, none of that. The large form, doesn't matter whether it's variegated, throw that out, doesn't matter. Um, the large form doesn't grow in the same way. It's kind of, I've got one on either side of my living wall, so if you see me looking over here, I'm trying to sort of describe what I see. But they grow like a million times the size of, let's be honest, we've discussed this before. Leaves on a large, um, small form maybe get like this. This is maybe... 12, 13 inches across, something like that. I mean, leaves on a massive, large form can be like two foot across. Like they are just huge. Um, so that's one thing. And it's, it's, you know, there needs to be something to support itself or it's not going to do it. The second thing is they like to grow out rather than up. Even though they grow upwards, it, it's, it's hard to explain. I don't know if they do it for balance or why they do it. I don't have the knowledge but they don't just grow neatly and, and viney. They grow differently. They grow a little bit more like a tree, really. So for that reason, in fact, I'm going to describe them as a tree. For that reason, it's quite difficult to keep them contained on a pole. Yes, I'm sure they'll climb it, but I don't think it would be a huge success, is what I'm saying. I think they'll outgrow the pole very quickly. But anyway, the, the, the point of that discussion was, I think I've got a pot it like that. Um, I was going to attempt it upstairs. So basically, I would attempt doing it, but it's probably it's probably going to fail. We'll see, though, because I, I do think it needs it, just because I don't want it to snap or anything. Um, if it was just the green form, I'd probably leave it to see if it would be all right. But given it's variegated and it's worth a shit ton of money, I'm not really prepared to leave it to its own devices. You feel me? Rare plant keeping is, is babysitting, is it not? So I'll probably do that, but... I just wanted to touch very quickly on why 
it's probably not going to work and why they don't like large poles. I'd be very interested if you have a large form and you know it's large form, um, they're very distinctive, trust me. Um, if you're doing that on a pole, if you've had success, like what's the tea? Let me know because I'm genuinely quite curious. I want to know what my chances are. Oh, there's a bloody aerial route that's gone in the petiole. Now I have to try and cover it up. I hate that. It's really irritating. Let me just try and... <sighs> Come on, cover it up. So yeah, basically that's all that was about, guys. Um, they just don't grow the same. They do, but they don't. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's a shame because when I move house, I really want to um, have one in my kitchen, but I think I would have to put something on the wall to let it grow on, like a big, um, I don't know, not trellis, but but something. But I think it's just going to ruin the walls of my house because they're pretty aggressive, to be honest. Um, so I'm kind of sad about that. I really wanted a large form in my new house when I get it there. Is. Um, but I don't think I can do it. I think I'm going to ruin my house and it'd be my first home. I don't want to do that, so we'll see what happens. Right, this is actually done. It is literally that easy, guys. Um, I put it in that way. Does it look hot? Yeah, yeah, I think it looks good. It looks all right. It's a pass. 